Hey, what's up class? Welcome back to another episode of Math One Distance Learning. Hope you guys are having a good week. Okay, here we go. Let's get started. So today we're going to do a review of solving equations. You have a, another test coming up soon. Um, but today we're going to work on solving equations specifically when you have a variable on both sides of the equation. So we've done these actually. You might not have realized you were doing these. So let's go ahead and get started. You already know how to do some of this. So part of it will be a little bit of a review. So I'm going to share my screen. Let's go ahead and get started. You should have these notes in front of you. All right, here we go. So we're going to be working on solving equations when we have variables on both sides of the equation. We want to use the concepts of balance and isolation. Those are both concepts that we have already learned in class this year. So balance and isolation. Um, and we want to be able to solve equations when there is a variable on both sides. So if you think of this balance scale here, if you could think of gold nuggets over on this side and also gold nuggets here. So we have a variable on both sides. All right, here we go. Okay, so I'm gonna review the balance scale strategy. We spent quite a bit of time working on this. Um, and just a couple reminders, a couple points to remember. When you're using the balance scale strategy, the whole idea or goal is to keep the scale balanced. We wanna keep it equal, we wanna keep it fair. And the way you do that is whatever you do to one side of the balance scale, you have to do to the other side. So if you're gonna take some weight off of one side, you have to take weight off of the other side. If you're gonna add something to one side, if you're gonna add gold nuggets to one side, then you have to add the same number of gold nuggets on the other side. So let's try a couple of examples of these. So here's our balance scale. And if we notice on the scale, we've got three nuggets on the left side, five nuggets on the right side, 16 pounds on the right side and 20 pounds on the left side. So the way we solve this, the goal is to find out how much does one nugget weigh all the nuggets weigh the same. So we just wanna find out how much does one of them weigh. And the way you do this is you start eliminating things from the balance scale. But whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other side. So I'm gonna take off um, some weight. I have 20 pounds here, but I only have 16 pounds here. So if I took this 20 pounds off, I, I actually, I can't do that because I don't have 20 pounds on this side. So I can only take 16 pounds, that's the most weight. So let's go ahead and do that. If I take 16 pounds off of both sides, over here on the right, this is completely gone. And on the left, we're, we're, we have four pounds remaining. Now let's take a look at the nuggets. I have three gold nuggets on the left side and five gold nuggets on the right side. So I couldn't take all five of these off because I don't have five gold nuggets over here to match that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take off those three and then I'm gonna take off three from the right side. And that leaves me with two gold nuggets. So now I'm gonna rewrite the problem. I have four pounds is equal to two gold nuggets. And we know that we could either multiply, or we could divide, we could do four divided by two. And then we find out that each nugget weighs two pounds. If I was gonna take this two and plug it right here, two times two makes four. Okay, so the goal in the balance scale strategy is you wanna make sure that you stay fair and balanced. Whatever you do on one side, you have to do on the other side. Okay, we'll try uh, one more balance scale strategy. And if you notice, we have a variable here, in for nuggets, but we also have a variable over here. We have a variable on both sides, just like we had on the previous problem. On the previous problem, I didn't put a variable, I just used gold nuggets, I used pictures, but this was still three in, and over here was five in, okay? In this problem, we have three in, three nuggets, and we have one nugget. So I wanna solve this, but we're starting with a variable on both sides. So once again, I wanna eliminate weight if possible. So I noticed that I have 22 pounds on the left side, 28 on the right side, and so, I'm gonna be able to take off 22 pounds off of both sides, which leaves me with six pounds over here on the right side. 
Now I want to think about the nuggets and I see that I have, I can take off one nugget off of both sides. So if I had three nuggets and I take one off, that leaves me with two nuggets and this 22 pounds is gone. Everything else is gone. I have six pounds. So let's rewrite the problem. And I can do division six divided by two. I can do two times a number and it comes out to N equals three pounds. So each nugget weighs three pounds. Now in the balance scale strategy, you have to remember whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other side. I kind of, I put this yin and yang on here to help you kind of remember whatever you do to one side, you've got to balance it out on the other side. Okay, so that's the balance scale strategy. Now, as we solve equations, um, now this one looks a little bit more complicated. It's not really, but um, here are some reminders for you when solving equations. So let's take a look at this one. I noticed that I have the variable n, I've got four n, but then that variable shows up again right here. And then it shows up again inside these parentheses and then one last time here. So what's nice is it's the same variable. It just happens to be in four different places. It would be more complicated if it was like an N and then this one was an X and this one was a Y and this one was a Z, that'd be more complicated. You'll get to that later in math two and math three. Okay, so what are we gonna do? I noticed that I've got this um, plus three in, so let's go ahead and eliminate that. So I'm gonna subtract three in from both sides and I'm gonna cancel there. Okay, are you good so far? No, you better be saying no. This is not what we wanna do. This is no bueno, okay? This is an incorrect step, all right? It's an incorrect first step. We definitely do not want to subtract three in from both sides. And the reason is because we have all these other ins floating around. We have to combine like terms. We have to clean some stuff up. So we're gonna do this next problem. We're gonna do it again correctly, but I wanna remind you, here's a reminder, organize each side before you start to eliminate. We didn't do that here. Here, we just subtracted three in. We started eliminating right away, but you can't do that when you've got variables all over the place. So we have to organize each side before eliminating parts. Okay, so let's take a look at this, um, this left side. I didn't draw the fence in here, but pretend your fence is here. So over here, I see that I've got four nuggets and two nuggets, and this is a minus two nuggets. So I'm going to combine these four nuggets, take away two nuggets. It's gonna give me two nuggets. It leaves me with two nuggets. And then I've got plus 24. Now I can go, there's nothing else I can do over here. I can't combine those. So now I can go look at the right side. So this is parentheses, correct? So it looks like I have a distributive property, a boom, chicka, boom. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna go boom, that gives me 18. And then two times four in, chicka, boom, gives me a plus eight in. And then drop this down and I have a plus three in. Now at this point, I still don't want to go subtracting three in from both sides. That's just going to get me into some trouble that I don't really want. So we have to do the same thing that we just did. We have to organize, combine like terms. So I have eight nuggets or eight orders of nachos plus three orders of nachos. So combine those and that's going to give you 11 in. Now we can bring the 18 down and we can bring the rest of the problem down. Okay, so I'm not gonna go any further on this problem. I just wanted to show you how important it is to organize each side. So here we had to do a boom, chicka, boom. Then we had to organize. So you have to organize, combine like terms before you go any further. Okay, so that was a correct first and second step. Okay, all right. So um, here's another reminder. When you have a variable on both sides, like in this problem we do, we've got the variable n over over here on the left side and we have the variable n on the right side. When you have a variable on both sides, it's important to eventually isolate the variable just to one side. We have to get the variable on one side eventually. And it doesn't really matter which side, either side is okay. Okay, so either side will work. 
All right, so let's go ahead. Everything to me in math is like a game. So I look at this and I go, oh, there's eight gold nuggets here. And there are six gold nuggets here. So they win, so they have to move. So let's go ahead and subtract six gold nuggets from both sides. And that's going to give us 24. Bring that 24 down is equal to, bring the 18 down. Eight minus six is two in. So I have now isolated the variable. I have the variable over here. It's on the right side. There are no in variables on the left side. So that's a good first step right there. I didn't have to combine any like terms. I was just able to subtract and eliminate. Okay, so that is a good first step. And then from here, you would just use the birthday boy strategy that I taught you. Remember the birthday boy strategy um, the variable is your birthday boy and this this number, this is like grandma, right? She loves her grandson and so she's going to stay longer. Um, so this 18 is going to leave first. And so we would subtract 18 from both sides and go from there. Okay, so you want to remember to isolate your variable. If you wind up with a variable on both sides, then you have not solved the problem correctly. You want to get that variable over to one side. Okay, and then the another reminder is that whenever we start eliminating numbers and variables, like if we go back to this one, we eliminated this six in, we did that by subtracting, right? So when you start eliminating variables and numbers, you want to do that by using their inverse operation, okay, which is their opposite operation. So our main operations are add, subtract, multiply, and divide. So if I want to eliminate or move something in an equation, I want to use its inverse operation. So for example, here, we can follow the birthday boy strategy. Here's grandma. She's real close to her grandson. She's going to stay longer. So we want to get rid of the 18. The 18 is a positive number. So I want to subtract 18. And the reason I chose the 18 and not the 24 was because 24 is bigger, right? So 24, one, so we have to move the 18. So I'm gonna cancel here. And this 24 minus 18 is gonna give me six. I already put the lines in there. That was kind of a hint on what we should do next. We have two times in, two times in, and the opposite or the inverse operation of multiply, the inverse operation is divide. So we wanna divide by two, and that's going to leave us with n is equal to three. N is equal to three, okay? And that's the only answer that will work. Three is the only number that I could put in here. For example, if I put the number four, two times four is eight, plus 18 makes 26, not 24. If I put the number one, two times one is two, plus 18 is only 20. So this number three is the only number that would work right there, okay? All right, but that's not always the case. And so thus we get to our next slide, which is how many solutions are there? Now I've already introduced this concept to you. So this is a little bit of a review. So sometimes when you're solving equations, sometimes your equations will have only one solution. For example, the problem that we just did, let's go back to it. This, I just showed you. This equation, there's only one possible answer that will work to keep it fair and balanced. And that's the number three. It's the only solution that will work. So most of the time your equations will have only one solution, right? It could be X equals three, it could be X equals 17, but it's only one correct answer. That means there's only one value that solves the equation. But we're now in high school, so there are some other possibilities. Sometimes when you're solving an equation, you might come across an equation that has no solutions. There's nothing, nothing, not a, nothing will work. Okay, so you, you'll run into this when you're solving your equation and you wind up with something like this. You get like negative two is equal to positive two. Well, we know that's not true, right? If you have $2 in your bank account, that's not the same as negative $2, right? We know this is not true. So if it's not true, then there's no solution. If we get something that we say is false, then your answer would be no solution. Okay, there are no values that could work. 
All right, and then the final possibility is uh, infinite solutions. I call this the Buzz Lightyear, and you'll see why in a, in a couple of minutes. So this is infinite solutions. So let's say that we um, you wind up solving your equation and you get two numbers that are identical to each other. They're equal, eight is equal to eight. Well, we know that that's true. And if you wind up with something that looks like this, where you have two numbers equal to each other, then your answer is all real numbers or infinite solutions. That means we can't, can't stop counting how many solutions. You can go on and on and on. Every number will work. Okay, so I'm going to do um, some examples. Um, so any value would work. So I'm going to do an example of a one solution. I'm going to do an example of a no solution problem and then one of an infinite solution problem. Okay, so here we go. Let's try this first one. Let's find out what this is. So I'm looking at the problem. I notice that I have a variable on both sides, but it doesn't look like I have to do any combining like terms, right? There's nothing I can do on the left side. There's nothing I can do on the right side. So I'm actually gonna put in the balance scale here just to help you remember whatever you do to one side, you do to the other side. So I noticed that this has three X, three extra large sodas, and this has two extra large sodas. So the three X wins. So I'm gonna subtract two X from both sides. And so over here, this is gonna give me three X, take away two X is gonna give me an X. So I get X minus five, I'm gonna bring down my minus five and then these get canceled out and I bring down my 12. Now I'm gonna use the inverse operation. I'm gonna isolate this variable. So I'm gonna use the inverse. If this is a subtraction or a minus, the inverse would be an add or a plus. So those get eliminated right there. And I have a final answer of X equals 17. And what that means is 17 is the only number that would work to keep the equation fair and balanced. It's the only number that solves the equation. Has, this is a one solution problem. X has only one solution, okay? And that solution is the number 17. All right, okay, let's try another one. Let's find out if this is a one solution, a no solution, or an infinitely many solutions. So on this one, I notice that I've got variables all over the place. I have a, an X on the left side. I have an X inside the parentheses and I have an X on the end. So I'm gonna draw my fence in there and there's really nothing I can do on the left side. So I'm gonna leave that. But here I have distributed property, a boom, chick, a boom. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a boom, that's two X and that's gonna give me two X. And then I'm gonna do a chick, a boom and that's gonna give me negative two. And then I'm gonna bring this down. I don't multiply two times this number on the outside. It's only on what's on the inside of the parentheses. Okay, so now um, I still see that I have some like terms that I need to combine. I have two X and an X, I need to combine those. So two X plus an X is three X. And then I've got a minus two. Now I'm gonna bring this whole section down now, at this point, hopefully you notice something a little odd or peculiar. Hopefully you notice that they look almost identical, but this is a plus two and over here is a minus two. Now that's a really big deal. Let's see what happens. So I'm gonna subtract three X from both sides, which means my variables are now completely eliminated. So all I have left over is a two equal to a negative two. Well, we already, agreed that these this isn't equal to each other, right? If you have $2 and you owe someone $2, those are not the same thing, okay? So this would be a false statement. Two is not equal to negative two, this is false. But remember, what were the instructions on the problem? It said solve for X. So we don't even have an X. The X has been eliminated, it's gone. So how are we gonna solve for X? Well. If your variable gets eliminated and the statement is a false statement, if it's not true and the variable has been eliminated, then your answer is X is equal to no solution. That means there's no answer that could make this equation work. There's no answer that would make it true. It's a false. It actually 
wasn't even equal. They weren't even balanced. We thought they were, but we weren't able to determine that until we solved the problem. And we got down here and we found out, hey, this wasn't even fair. It wasn't even balanced. It wasn't even equal to start. Okay, so there are no answers that would solve this. There's nothing that would solve it. Okay, all right. Um, I think we have two more examples here. Let's see. So this one, we're solving for X and we've got variables everywhere, right? We've got X has gone wild. We have an X here. We've got an X inside the parentheses. We have an X on the outside here. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my fence and let's go ahead and um, there's really nothing we can do over here, but here we can do a boom chicka boom. We have distributive property. So I'm gonna go boom, that gives me two X and then chicka boom, that's gonna give me an eight and then plus an X. Okay, so now before I go any further, I don't even wanna bring this down. I need to combine my like terms. So let's go ahead and combine those. And that's gonna give me three X plus eight. And then I can go ahead and bring this down and that's a three X plus eight. So hopefully you notice something a little peculiar. And that is not only are they equal, but they are identical. This is exactly identical to this. It's like a mirror image. Okay, now that's really important. Hopefully if you get to a place like this and you recognize that, then you'll know what your answer is. So let's go ahead a little bit further. Let's subtract three X from both sides. So I cancel, my variables are completely canceled now. That's gone, that's gone. And now I'm left with eight is equal to eight. So is that a true statement? Well, let's think about it. Eight chocolate chip cookies, is that equal to eight chocolate chip cookies? Are eight bunny rabbits equal to eight bunny rabbits? Yes, it's true. But the problem is our variable's gone, right? We're supposed to be solving for X and we don't have any X's, they're gone. It's nowhere to be found, they got eliminated. So we have to come up with some answer, okay? So if you get a true statement, but your variable's been eliminated, right? We canceled out the variable. Then we still have to solve for X. X is equal to all real numbers, all real numbers. And what that means is any number you can think of, if you were to plug it in for X, it would make a true statement. For example, if I put the number 10 here, and then I put the number 10 there and I put the number 10 there, this would be a true statement. I can't put 10 and then a seven and then a four, that's not gonna work. But as long as I put the same number, I could put 15 million and I could put 15 million there and 15 million here and it would still come out to be a true statement. So all real numbers, I could do negative numbers. I could put negative five, negative five and negative five, all real numbers. Okay, another way to say this is there are infinitely many solutions, right? And this is where Buzz Lightyear comes in. If you've seen his movies, he says to infinity and beyond, right? So it's infinitely many solutions. It doesn't matter what number we pick, it will work if you get an all real numbers answer. Okay. All right, so we've got one more example together. This is a practice word problem. You will have some of these on your test. All right, so it says find a number that is 20 more than four times its opposite. Whew, holy shnikes. All right, so it says find a number. All right, well, we don't even know what the number is. So if we don't know the number, then do you remember what we do? We've practiced this quite a bit. If we don't know the number, then we use a variable, right? We wanna let X equal the number. Well, in the problem, it says find a number that is 20 more than four times its opposite. So that would be the opposite of the number. Well, we don't know what the number is. If we're using the variable X, then that means the opposite would be negative X, right? If our number happens to be five, the opposite would be negative five. Okay, so we, we don't know what the number is. All right, so here we go. It says find a number. So I'm gonna start off with X. That is, 
Okay, that is, that's code for equals. And then we've got 20 more than four times its opposite. So hopefully you remember that we have a special right here, a special combo, more than, and that tells us we need to take this 20 and move it to the back. We're gonna have to reverse the order. So, and more than is an add, but we're just gonna add 20 on the back. So if I'm adding 20, I should put it over here right now. So I'm gonna put it right there. And then what are we adding 20 to? It's more than four times the opposite. Well, what did we say the opposite was? That's negative X. So four times the opposite, four times negative X. Okay, so that's our equation, but now we have to solve it. So I'm gonna clean this up a little bit right here. I'm gonna rewrite it as X is equal to negative four X plus 20. Right, four times negative X is negative four X. And now since this is negative, I'm going to add it to both sides. So these are gonna cancel. And I'm gonna get X plus four X is equal to five X. I'm gonna bring my 20 down. And then we can divide or you can do it in your head. Five times a number makes 20. I'm gonna go ahead and divide. If I divide by five, that gets eliminated my number is X is equal to four. Okay, so X is equal to four. So that means there, this is a one solution. Four is the only number that works. So remember our question said, find a number. Well, there's only one number that works and that's the number four. It's not a no solution and it's not an infinitely many solutions. It's a one solution problem. Four is the only answer. Okay, so at this point, remember, if you wanna get full credit on your notes, you need to write yourself a tip or you could write a question that you might have, which you can bring up in class. But if you want full credit, make sure you fill something in here. And I think that's it. So um, work on that. Remember, you can watch the video, you can pause it, you can rewind it, you can go back and listen to something a second time or a third time. That's the nice thing about these videos. If we were in class, as soon as the bell rang and you walked out, then you might forget what I've said. But since it's on video, you can go back and rewatch it. Okay, so you guys have a good rest of your day and I will uh, see you in our next meeting. Okay, talk to you later. Over now.